big news, which you will be hearing for the first time, is that we now know that Ravi Zacharias, the great, the, the, the busy evangelist, was in the massage business in the state of Georgia in the 1990s. Um, I'm sorry, in the, in the, in the 2000s. Uh, I don't know the exact years, but it was at least from 2005 to 2010 and probably longer than that. I've, there are, there's actually a video on YouTube where you can see Ravi with an, his Indian partner, a man named Anurag Sharma, and they were in the massage business. Esther, I can see by the look on your face that you find this hard to believe. When I was first told about this, I was not able to actually believe that Robbie would be in the massage business. And so I didn't pursue the story. And then a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Sharma, Ravi's business partner, called me. And he told me that he was in the massage business with Ravi. And he told me that he discontinued the Jivan wellness business because of the way uh, I asked him, how did it how were you, uh, how did you feel about the fact that Ravi would preach against immorality, um, but he was immoral with the massage therapists? And Mr. Sharma said, this is probably the reason I killed Jivan Wellness. So he stopped the business because of Ravi's conduct. This is very explosive, brand new information. There's also another uh, massage therapist who worked with Ravi um, I can't disclose details, but she uh, told me just a few days ago that Ravi had exposed himself to her during a treatment one day and asked that she massage him in that area. So there are people coming forward now to talk about Ravi's sexual misconduct while he was in the massage business in Georgia. Now, if you would like to, if your viewers are interested in starting uh, to, to look into this for themselves, simply go to, to YouTube and type in Jivan, uh, J-I-V-A-N, I think it means life in, um, uh, and Jivan Wellness Grand Opening. And there you will see Ravi and Mr. Sharma at the grand opening of their business together. Um, you're the first to hear about it but it's going to be very disturbing to many people when they hear about it. I really appreciate you sharing with us at this point in your scrutiny, because I'm sure I'm assuming you are still working on it. I mean, you, you found that that's a revelation. You found that out, but I'm sure you're working on bringing it out, still publishing it on the public domain. But I really appreciate it, you sharing it with us. This is explosive revelation, uh, Steve, and I'm shocked. So this is all after he started RZIM. Yes. That's uh, R -Z -R -Z -I -M, the Ravi Zacharias yes. International Ministries. Yeah. Yes, he this was in the 2000s. After he started uh, the funding organization disguised as an apologetic industry or factory. And after he started all that, the work for the kingdom of God, he goes into massage business and and is and gets engaged, involved in all this sexual misconduct. Correct. And uh, I asked one of his business colleagues, Ravi was a, bus a very busy international evangelist. Why would he go into the massage business? And this person told me, legitimately, Ravi had a, very, very bad back. So that was part of it, but also to satisfy his sexual, she called it perversions. I don't know if, if I would use that word, but those were the exact words to satisfy that part of himself, sexual uh, um, perversion. And if you think about it, why else would Ravi go into the massage business? He's an international traveling man, and he's in the spotlight all the time. So if he did want to do things with women outside of his marriage, 
what better way to do it than to start your own massage place? Now, these were health spas. This was not simply a massage place. It was a, uh, um, they did all sorts of things and, and Jivan had a, a Ayurvedic aspect to it. And, uh, and it was probably a very respectable uh, place in general um, and overall focus on healing and, and general well-being. But massage was also a part of it. Why would Ravi invest in a business like that? Well, he could be alone with women. And he was yeah. alone with women. And what we know about what went on in those massage rooms is really troubling. Um, these were women who he had professional power over. Uh, these weren't equal colleagues. Uh, so it's still a very new story. And I don't want to talk about it in too much detail, but I would like your viewers to know that this is coming down uh, very soon. Um, it has not been published yet in the US. Uh, I have something, I have a video I've made about it, but I'm holding off on it in hopes that perhaps his ministry will issue an apology. I've been in touch with Ravi's ministry um, and I told them that I think they should apologize. And uh, so far, nothing is happening. And I really expect that they will do what they've done before. It's like what the Catholic Church did when they were exposed for child molesting. They evaded, they avoided, they lied, they blamed the victim. I think that's what we're going to see from Ravi's ministry right now, which is very disappointing to me, but there is just, this is too, this is too troubling for them to just come out and admit it, I think. So uh, we'll actually, see what happens. Yes, yes. Well, good luck on that. And I hope uh, the, Ministry comes out and apologizes it before you put it out on the public domain. Yes, so you know that. If I apologize to you, would you stop putting it on the public domain? Yes, it, it, it wouldn't be that they would need to apologize to me. Uh, they don't owe me an apology, but I, it's important that there appear to be a fairly large number of women who Ravi was sexually involved with in a relationship with unequal power. He was the powerful man. He was the partner. He was the, the, uh, the, the man with fantastic wealth. Um, so it seems to me that the honest and decent thing to do would be for RZIM or Ravi's family to simply say, we are truly sorry for what Ravi did to you. We love Ravi. We love his work for the gospel of Christ. And we're very, and we've all sinned. All have sinned and fall short of the of God's glorious ideal, but Ravi's sin was sexual in nature and it had an abusive side to it, and we're deeply sorry. That would be what they would do if they really believed in their God. Will sure. they do that? We'll see. I don't think right. so. these revelations won't spark a theological fistfight. No atheist should use the Ravi Zacharias example as a club against Christianity, and no Christian, it seems to me, should let Ravi Zacharias' misconduct destroy their faith. The gentleman has given us a fantastic opportunity to better understand what goes on in the dark underbelly of the evangelical business world, and to take meaningful steps towards greater integrity and basic human decency. Thank you for listening, thank you for caring, and thank you for doing something about it.